every time Pastor David has come, he has uh, shared some things and all his trips and all those things. But uh, I, would, I would love you all to be blessed by his uh, prophetic ministry. So from time to time, I would say, David, you take the whole service and share the message that the Lord has laid in your heart. And uh, just minister as the Lord leads. And uh, also now that he's moved fully into his prophetic office, that, uh, that it would be good that he begin in our church as a group to share and, uh, and develop the skills of uh, how the Lord leads him in sharing. Uh, not just uh, as a missionary that he did in the past in, his, in Cambodia, but now with a fresh anointing uh, as a prophet of God, just sharing as the Lord leads him and uh, scolding too if you want. And, uh, and <laughs> whatever, whatever the Lord leads you uh, as a fivefold, fivefold prophet, just stand and just give God's word as you want. And the people here can take it and uh, praise the Lord. Thank you for the silent amens. <laughs> so anyway, you know him and we all know him. We love him. So let's uh, open our hearts uh, to the prophetic ministry and the word that God has uh, f uh, with uh, Pastor David and uh, be blessed by it. Let's all uh, give Jesus a good clap offering as, you, as uh, Pastor David comes. Amen. Thank you. Thank all you. yours. Eddie, you help me with the, yeah. I drink so much water instead of walking so much. I bring it near to me lah, huh? Better lah, you know. I have my pause will be quite, quite long. Well, I will be sharing a few things, and then at the end of it, I'll give you an exhortation. Um, uh, for some of you who were not here last night. Um, we, we, we also uh, said, I mean, Shama told me the last one week of fasting, uh, he reminded me of a vision when I had in uh, Philadelphia Church. Uh, it speaks of a vision I saw where I saw seven clusters of olive trees. And, and he said, because we, we, we have taken the initiative to fast, we are bringing that vision into fruition. So last night, it came at 12 o'clock, and then uh, I anointed those who were present. So for those who were not present last night, you will receive the anointing also. Okay? We will, uh, we will bless it upon you, but I'll explain that anointing later. Now, uh, also, this week, uh, I managed to uh, set down uh, with Pastor Peter and we, he went through the vision that I received in Jordan. Uh, I mentioned before, last year when I answered the call from the Lord to hand over my ministry in Cambodia to the churches, uh, in fact it was the previous year, uh, in October 2010, where the Lord impressed my heart to uh, hand over the duties to the pastors and move on. And, and we, 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 we went to certain action so that uh, we can delegate, we can decentralize. My ministry in Cambodia was centralized with one church. We had seven other churches, I mean, including that one was NR6 churches. And the, the few months until June, uh, eight months, we decentralized. So, we make each pastor uh, self of uh, proficient, and by by last year, June, we, we left, and then the Lord said, "Go Middle East." Uh, I I didn't realize it turned out to be uh, no longer a missionary calling, but a prophetic ministry, and it was last year about September when I was praying. That Shama whispered to my ear, Madaba. I said, Ah, Madaba, is that a place? So I went into the internet and searched. And then I found out Madaba was uh, uh, about an hour drive from Amman, the capital of Jordan. So when I went for my trip last year, after Turkey, uh, the Lord led me to Israel. And after Israel, I went to Jordan. And I went to Madaba. And it was a seven nights of uh, spiritual 
I want I say a spiritual journey. Uh, and it was a journey into the past. And uh, there is a reason why I started with Noah. And and all the way to the other prophets up to Zechariah. And the last uh, we spent two days together. Tuesday he said, Oh, come at 9.30. Uh, and he say and we do as the as the as the spirit flow. We, we we see how the Lord lead. Wow, 9 30 a.m. until 8 30 p.m. You know? He grilled me, asked me a question, and I didn't realize until he said, Hey, you can't sit still one. Uh. He he can sit there and type. Uh. I will sit there, I go to the sofa, lie down, you know, and then i you know, I was doing everything. Hey, 11 hours now talking, recalling everything. So by by 7 o'clock, I was having a fatigue already. So uh, then he said, okay, we take a break tomorrow. I come to your house. I said, okay, la, good. La. Uh, he had something in the morning and came at 3 p.m. And 3 p.m., uh, we, we, we did it until about, about 6. La. Then he, he said, hey, I think I may have overcome here tonight, you know. <laughs> I mean, ask him to come to my house and he want to camp overnight. <laughs> and then he called Tawa, said, Ah, Tawa, Brother Tawa, oh, I, I won't be coming back tonight. I'm going to camp over at David's house tonight. Ayo. So, well, we, we talked, we, we, and he, he grilled me again, and, and by 2 a.m., I was very tired. And he said, Oh, uh, he asked my wife, hey, You got some you know? I said, No, my wife said, No, some you know? Uh, soon, soon you have some huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I will buy, I will supply some way, Don't worry. <laughs> you know, and two thirty we went to NTUC to buy. He said because why he told me, oh, some way you put the water, uh, and then it's, it's like so uh, the water, uh, you drink it, was oh, shock, make you awake. You know? So I said, okay la, good la, I need, I need to be awake. So went to NTUC, go and buy. He took one packet of some then took another packet, and then three packets. I said, how awake do you want me to be? Uh, so we ended up no camping. We, we went through all the way until 6 a.m. Then I said goodbye to him. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether he slept in the MRT, but I was sleeping on my bed. Okay? So, so now, I, I would love to share a few of the things that I've learned. Uh, it was very important that he went through this with me. Because like, when I go to Russia next week, something else will be given to me. Shama already told me, he said, he will reveal more of things to come to me. Now, it's not to me as, because I, 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 I'm going there on the trip, no, but because the Lord has called me to be a prophet to the nations. And, and all these visions has a purpose uh, in, in the overall plan of the church revival or the church of Christ in the whole world. And the, the account of my Jordan spiritual journey, uh, one of the main uh, conclusions we, we came was for me to know who Shama really is. Let's turn to Joshua chapter 5. And, and you know, this is something that, I mean, we, we I, I think three weeks ago I told you, I, I revealed to you, because those of you who have read the accounts of my journey, one or two of you may have said, hey, was Shama an angel? So three weeks ago, I reviewed that, yes, Shama was an archangel. Uh, it's not time to reveal his name yet, but he gave me the name Shama because in a way, there was a relationship. David had his mighty man, and one of his mighty men was called Shama. So when he revealed Shama, I, I went to look into the Bible and I found, oh, mighty man. So that was a beginning of, uh, a start of that relationship. But as we went through that uh, journey, we realized we came to such an awesome and frightening uh, 
Revelation. Let's read Joshua chapter 5, verse 13. And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? So he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? That realization that we are working with the commander of the Lord's army. I have already said Gabriel has also came into our midst a few times and, and to realize that Shama is the commander of the Lord of hosts. That means all the millions of angels under him. That is why when I when he revealed his name to me in Pergamos, I fell. I was crying. This is, it was as though, oh, I'm gonna die, you know. And 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 even, the, I mean, thinking of it, it, it sends silver into my body. So last night I did mention to the group. Uh, I, I already told my family, no longer jazz about Shama. I mean, even the, the fact, oh, hey, uh, by the way, is Shama here? No, no such thing. Okay? We have to be uh, at, at a flick of his finger, you can die. <laughs> and that is why he told me before I came back last trip, he said, you will no longer be struck by lightning anymore. So that told me he was the one who struck me. <laughs> <laughs> And then he, he said, but I will not hesitate to strike you if you disobey or you, you abuse the power. So, that has weighed upon me since I came back. This is why I, 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 I'm a bit lost. I was a bit lost and, you know, careful in what I say and, you know, uh, not knowing what is right and wrong, I mean, for a start. So, but he is gracious. You know, he said, well, the, the next one year and two years is my training. Um, so, so I, I have been receiving the anointing from the Lord the last three months. And as you have, it is invested in us. When the time comes, you will rise up in us. One of the, the implication of him being the commander of God's army. Last night, Pastor Peter explained about, because Archangel Michael has always been seen as the warring angel. But now, I have to explain this. When, when I was in a spirit rhyme with Shama, and I saw Joshua talking to the angel of the Lord of the hosts, it was Shama. So that is why I, when I revealed to Pastor Peter, I said, yeah, that was Shama. So this is why we, we identify him as the commander of God's army. And, and his immense power given to him. This is why even Joshua fell and worshipped him. Now, we do not worship angels, but because we worship him because he is the personified uh, presence of God. God has delegated, and this is another one of the things we learn, God delegated his power, his presence to the angel. And we worship that angel not because he is an angel, but because he is God represented. When 
on the Passover, the first time when Moses, uh, after the template, and then the, the Pharaoh consented to release the people of Israel, and then Moses gave the command to do the Passover sign on the door, and the night when, when, when uh, you know, it was, uh, it was the army of God that descended into the whole of Egypt. It was his general that brought uh, their, their, their forces of angels down. When I was in Turkey during my trip, uh, I was given three bodyguards. Now we no longer call them bodyguards. They are the generals under Shama. Shama has many other generals. After the generals, there are many other leaders. Uh, commander of 10,000 commander of thousands and hundreds and all those. But um, since that revelation, we recognize them as generous. I mean, that's our term because they are directly under Shama. And in the last one month, Shama, as usual, he will go off and, you know, but the three generals have always been with me. So that night, when the time came for God to fulfill His commandment, the host of angels just came down from, from the skies. It just came down in thousands and probably even hundreds of thousands. They just came down with sword drawn and they went into every household and they struck the firstborn, even the animals. Here, when, when, when Joshua say, are you for me or against? And that is how the angels of God can be. They are either for you or against you. That is the seriousness of the presence of God in our midst. They were against the Egyptian. Even maybe those Israelites who did not obey the commandment. But when the Israelite came out of Egypt, it was the same host that followed them and protected them for them. This is, this is the ministry of angels in our midst and it is going to be the ministry to stay with us for the work of reviving the church of God in the whole world. So, I would caution everyone, even in the internet, those who are listening or those who will listen future, do not offend the revelation that has been given. Because why? If they are not for you, they will be against you. And this is, this is the last day where, where God is going to manifest his angelic ministry more. We are all going to be, some of you will, will begin to have glimpses of angels. I mentioned about my mentor, Jonathan Fong. Huh? Although he was open to all these things, but there was still that conservation regarding angels. Because we have grown up with that teaching you know, that we do not worship angels. But by the grace of God, when he was in the church of Thyatira, the Lord spoke to him and said, look up. And he looked up and he saw the angel of Thyatira smiling at him. This is, this is just a sample of what is to come. The ministry of angels. From now, let that let there be faith in you to believe every act you do in the name of the kingdom of God. Everything the Lord has instructed you to do, either through the Holy Spirit or through the angel, know that God accompanies it with the ministry of angels to fulfill, to bring it to pass. This is our privilege 
to believe and to act on. Okay. Now, I when I saw the time of Noah, there was open vision. That means angels were as physical as any human being. And that is why men in that time became very vile and they be began to worship the fallen angels and the angels. And the fallen angels accepted those worship and they demanded sacrifices of beautiful women and children. And that's why the Lord said the stench of their sin, the Lord abhor and, and want to wipe out the whole of mankind. But he saw that Noah was righteous. That's why he, he spoke to Noah to build the ark. And it was from there that Shama was involved as an uh, instructor because it was also in, in the period of Noah that I learned another thing. That was the intention for me to learn. The, 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 the work of not just angels but of the spirit powers. Those spirits that are of different powers. And when they were in Noah's time, they were uh, they had a form. But after Noah's time, they no longer had a form. They are all just in a, in a globe of light. So there is that difference. So when, when Moses parted the Red Sea, it was the spirit power at work, not angels. So it was in Noah's time that uh, there was open vision. So after the flood, when, 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 uh, when there was only Noah's family, uh, only Shem, the second son, had continued with open vision because the spirit power that was working uh, in charge of building the ark, uh, after the, the, the family came out from the ark, the spirit power followed Shem. So we were, we were edit our record and one day we will share with you uh, the works, I mean what I witnessed. It was a witness of how Noah's Ark was built. One fact uh, I, uh, I would like you to know is Noah's Ark was bigger than what we knew. I went to the internet to see you know, uh, there was a, a, a artist who could derive that, oh, it's 50 cubit, so it was like 40 feet high. Uh, the, arc, uh, the arc was not 40 feet high, uh, 45 feet high. It was 200 meter high. It was huge. They say it was uh, 175 feet long or something like that. I can't remember the internet, but the arc was actually 2 kilometer long. Because the animals were also huge. The, the time man, even uh, uh, Noah, he was about seven feet five. His children were all seven feet, seven feet five, you know. Even his wife was six feet five, very tall, muscular people. The world at that time, they were also strong and healthy. And the animals, they were huge and large. So the the, the image that we see in the internet, they are all based on the wrong measurement. So this is why, although in, 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 in Genesis it says uh, 300 cubit, 50 cubit, 30 cubit, but when I look at the ark, I, I mean, I, I, I was not permitted to, I mean, I was in the spirit form, so I was not permitted to communicate. So I just estimate. You know, because I look at the compartment. So even the ark, the Lord said we we'll build three decks, and it was not mentioned what were the three decks for. So, but I saw, and inside the deck there were many platforms, and the lower decks was for the storage of water, and fruits and plants and all those things. The the middle deck was for the huge and large animals. 
Uh, the elephant, we, we call it the behemoth. Uh, it was huge. The skull of the elephant was alone about five meter big. Huge, you know, very high. One behemoth was just good enough to enter the door. It was, you know, in the picture we always say two elephants walk together. No, that, 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 it was so huge. Huh? It was just big enough for one behemoth to go in. So these are, these are all the things that I was shown. And, and it was a seven days uh, uh, download. Uh, and and it, it was all compressed and then he needed this overtime man to kind of help me to uh, extract out uh, next time if he say hey, let's do some work I say how many hours first <laughs> let's determine first let's make a contract first uh, uh, from 11 hours to 15 hours I say ah yo yo uh, but I will bring the sumai <laughs> There, there are so many accounts. Uh, uh, I'm just, just trying to give you some tidbits. Um, uh, now, but also, throughout the whole account, there were specific instructions given to me by Shama. Uh, those are very serious. Uh, for one, one of the instructions he told me, he said, uh, uh, when uh, during Daniel's, uh, when we were observing Daniel, then he looked to me. Fasting and prayer is the key to all things preacher and fisker. Then he was very stern. <laughs> this is why since I came back, ah, uh, fast, uh, no problem, I'll fast. Ah, uh, this is why the overnight prayer, I come, you know, uh, because I got instruction to do it. So something like that. Even after I'll be sharing with you, one thing he, he talked about praying into your vision, praying into your anointing. The things, the spiritual revelation that we receive from God, we must pray into them. Yes, we, we receive them, but it is your praying through that works its power into us. Just like, maybe like, for example, a computer. I give you a new computer, but if you leave it there, you don't open it, you don't switch it on, you don't power it up. It's just a, a piece of electronic thing. But if you open it up, you boot it up, you power it up, you use it up, you become proficient in it. So same thing. The anointing that you receive, the visions that you receive, you must work into them. So, like when I came back, you received the anointing of God's glory. You must pray into it, must work into it. You receive the spirit of prophecy. You must work into it, pray into it. Last night, you received the spirit of the seven spirits of God the fullness of, of His Spirit. You must pray into it. I will talk more on this. I think I just want to tell you more stories. Huh? Okay. Um, King David. I, we wrote down, there were a few people you could see in their eyes the aliveness. Moses was one. By the way, all the angels that were involved will be the same angels that were involved themselves with us. So they come with thousands of years of experience. The, when, when, when Moses was placed into the river by his mother in the basket, it was the three generals, the same three generals that are assigned to me that were watching so throughout uh, uh, the, 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 the story you know, all the prophets 
Shama and his three angels were always present. And they are the ones that are always uh, looking after the, the prophets or the men of God. And, and Moses, uh, when he was on the river, two of the generals were hovering. One general was on horseback, but all these are in the spiritual rank and following the basket along the river. And then when it came to a tributary, it was one of the general that pushed the basket to the, the stream that led to the Pharaoh's, do uh, Pharaoh's daughter's palace. It, this, is, this is how it happened in the spiritual realm. Okay. And when I saw Moses grow up, he was from, from the young age, you can see the destiny that is upon his life. But one of the features that captured me was, were his eyes. Just like David's eyes, very alive, very spirited, very alert. Us, even Abraham also had that. But Isaac was not. Isaac was not, not in the eyes. Samuel, the prophet, whoa! <laughs> Elijah, their eyes brought fear to men, you know that? No? That is what I saw. So these are all the, uh, because why the, the Spirit of God is so full in all these people. And, and last night I mentioned about David. He was so full of, of the Spirit of God in him. Although he failed uh, in, in his adultery with Bathsheba and although he murdered uh, Bathsheba's uh, husband, he was able to be restored quickly, to be reconciled with God. So because of his uh, anointing that has always resided in him. So this is something I want to encourage you. The anointing that you, you receive from meditation of the word, from prayer, from laying of hand, pray into them, work into them. Because the time will come, the Lord said there will be tribulation. There will be betrayers. There will be death. You need that. You need that to sustain your faith. And, and you know, of all the people I saw, David, wow, that's my namesake. Uh, uh, David. Uh, uh, I think he, he, he was much more than who I am. He's... he's his connection with God was so instantaneous. And again, uh, another thing I learned is our words. Now, not, I, you don't have to be a prophet to realize that the words that come out from your mouth are very important. God takes it very seriously, what you speak. Like, for example, if one or two of you, you have been given, you know, we, 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 we anointed you with the spirit of prophecy, and then we, we talk about praying and writing prophecy and putting a box, and then you, if by now you still haven't written anything, don't keep saying, hey, I don't have it, I cannot prophesy. Those are the words that, that actually God takes it and act on what you say. And, and it could be maybe tomorrow it, the anointing comes, you are able to prophesy. But because you say, I still cannot, eh? you are delayed in our six months. The words that we speak is, is so important to us. And, and therefore, I would caution all of us, don't take lightly. 
you may end up cursing yourself. And and pastor was teaching something, you know, we being human, we we have thoughts that may like be like this. We may think before we speak, we may think, hey, I still cannot prophesy. Now instead of speaking it out, turn it into prayer. Go into prayer, say, Lord, you know I I've been seeking, you know, I've been anointed to prophesy. I've been seeking to prophesy, but yet i have tried so hard i have yet i have not been able to write anything prophetic can you please come and work in me can you please take whatever inhibition i have so that your anointing can flow so you you make it into a prayer and it is the lord does not take your word for that because it is a prayer to god and because that thought is an energy it is released and you you are set free from that so but if you don't pray it out it's always in there in thought i cannot i cannot prophesy then suddenly meet up with that hey i cannot prophesy the angels are there to record you know and you cannot prophesy maybe for another six months so this is something we all must learn don't don't belittle yourself You need not to be a, an apostle or a prophet. Our role is, is to give you the vision and the teaching. But you are actually the people who is going to work to bring revival in. Um, so do not belittle yourself. If you you may have some of you may come from another church it doesn't matter because why that church is part of the church of god you have a place the reason you are here because the lord has led you here to receive this teaching to receive this anointing so that you can be a catalyst in your church so that you can be a catalyst in your family in your office so be very slow to speak and that's why i've been struggling since i came back the last one month very slow to speak because i have to be sure ah and, and, you know, say, you know they, they start to say something and then god will dishonor and especially so for me ah uh, ah uh, uh and and the the greater the revelation the the heavier the responsibility so well, I, I i would i think you you would we took uh 26 hours uh, to come up with that thing i think we may we may need a, a seminar of three days you know to to go through so maybe you know in the old days i think some of us who are older uh, maybe some of you older than me but some of us who are older uh, in the past, I think we had gone through some uh, seminar, walk through the Old Testament, walk through the New Testament. I think uh, you remember uh, this one, this this walk, this uh, thing we come up next time. This walk through the Old Testament will be very colorful. Uh, I I have described how Noah looked like, how Abraham looked like, Isaac, Jacob, all these people, because it was imprinted in me. Uh, I described how Goliath looked like. Uh, Samson, Delilah, all those. By the way, of all the women in, in, the, in the Bible, do you know who was the most pretty, most beautiful? Huh? No, la Bathsheba, Pai Lang Ah, how can? Who was? Who? Sarah. Even when she died, the day she died, she was still beautiful. Very beautiful. When I see her, pom 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 pom, you know, <laughs> very beautiful. <laughs> no wonder Abraham was so, uh, uh. <laughs> no, really, it was so fair. I mean, not fair as in uh, Caucasian fair, but beautiful features, lips, eyes, ears, nose, everything, shoulder, and she was a beautiful dancer. 
I, I, I think I should ask my wife to learn dancing. Uh. <laughs> you, know, you see, the wife used to entertain their husband dancing. Uh. Uh, so how? How? Uh, you want to go exercise? Dancing is a good exercise. Uh. <laughs> Amen. Uh. Yeah, amen. Uh. So, well, I... I uh, let me... Uh, if I think of some other story to share, I'll tell you. But let's... I want to... I want to... Uh, recap, okay? Some of the things I said last night for those who are not here. And I think it's important... Uh, for us to, and afterwards, uh, there is still time. Afterwards, I'm going to go through with you some of the visions and and the and the and the prophecy that were given during my trip to Turkey. Although Pastor has sent uh, the the word to the church to you uh, this morning when I woke up, Shama said. Get the whole church to proclaim together. Okay, so after towards at the end of it, I'll, I'll be getting you to open up your Bibles. I will also uh, reinforce some of the vision that were given, and most of the verses is to proclaim so that you absorb it into your spirit. Let's turn to Isaiah. Chapter 60, yeah. And I said last night, uh, this year on the 8th of January, uh, after Linus finished worshipping, and then Pastor stood up, somehow the Lord let him you know, to wait, and he said, There is a word of prophecy. And he waited. And then it was me who shouted out. Uh, uh, Isaiah 60 verse 1 It says Arise Shine For your light has come And the glory of the Lord Is risen upon you And In uh, verse 12 It also say You know the, uh, That uh, That the The Lord shall be your everlasting light No not, not verse 12 Wait huh? Where was it? 20, yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's read verse 20 also. Your sun shall no longer go down, nor shall your moon withdraw itself. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and the days of your mourning shall be ended. This is one thing we must proclaim into our spirit. The word is a command at first. Arise. This this word arise is 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 not a, a lot, it's not just standing up. It is abide. Stand firm in it. Be accomplished in it. And shine. The Lord said, You are the light of the world. Believe it. You are the light of the world. Now if I were to put it in a negative sense, most of you were just the bub. Or before, before the Lord proclaimed His prophecy in our life, we were just the bub, but no electricity. But with this proclamation, with this prophecy, we are lighted up. We have received the anointing and the power. Therefore, the Lord commands it that we stand up, we arise, we get up, we abide in it, be accomplished in this, who we are, the light of the world, shine. And it's not, not just inner, but there is the outside, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And the glory of the Lord is shining on you. I will repeat my, 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 my vision of Pergamos. The glory of God was so strong, so pure. 
the light of God went out seven times. Each time I finished a prayer walk, one round, I went seven round. The light went out in His power. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, the Son of God, was risen up as like a morning star above the mountain. Then the whole place, the whole place was shining bright. It's the same physically when, when the Temple of Solomon was dedicated on that first day. When the uh, cherubim, this, the glory of God descended into the ark, into the temple, all the priests who, who had finished the, 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 uh, the, 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 the rituals, the celebration, all the priests had to run out of the temple. You know why? Because the temple was so bright. It was like a pure white glory that everyone who were near had to move away from the temple because the glory of God was shining. It was the same that uh, the, the people saw in Moses. When he came down, he was so brilliantly light that he was almost transculent, you know, almost you know, just radiating. And this is why the people said, please put a veil on your face. This is what happened in Pergamos. And this is the glory of God that has risen upon you and me. And, and in verse 20, the, the Lord said, I will be your everlasting light. This is a revelation to tell you no longer will there be darkness in your life. This is why when I, when I talk about the anointing of God's glory, I also talk about the anointing of triumphs of God, the victory of God in our lives. This is it. If you arise, you stand in victory. This is your position. This is what you are destined to be from now. Standing in victory. I pray for someone, one of you, and I say, the posture of victory, the walk of victory, the, the, the character, the mindset of victory, this is what you have. You have received it. Act on it. David, you know, when, 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 he, when, he, when he heard about Goliath challenging the army of God, he was stirred up with anger. He said, who is this uncircumcised Palestine who dare to challenge the name of God? The moment he said that, the angels went to the camp. Already they were dead before even David fought with Goliath. That is how the angels are going to assist us. Our word, when we proclaim, when we stand on it, the angels, they act on it. And I want to be able to pray uh, that you see this. This is our destiny. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Okay? Let's spend a moment just to pray. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. See it. See in your life. Receive it. Believe it. Let's, let's go through that procedure. Receive it into your spirit. Let's act on that now. Receive it into your spirit. Into your mind. Into your soul. Into your body. See yourself arise. Not sitting. Not getting up, but standing. Risen up. See that, your position. And see the glory of God shining on you. See it. Look at it. Look at yourself. The glory of God is shining upon you. This is the light that will be your everlasting light until the day you die and return to the Lord. This is your gift. This is your anointing. 
this is your victory victory is first in the spiritual receive it father we receive it thank you Lord. we receive it Lord. thank you Lord. thank you Lord we receive Lord even as we receive let your power heal restore even as we receive that power into our body in the name of your son by the glory Lord that is given to us we are restored we are healed we thank you Lord therefore Lord no longer shall we live in darkness but darkness has flee has run away no longer the sun shall be our light but you are our light we receive it Lord we thank you Lord thank you in Christ's name Amen Let's turn to Isaiah 11. This was the anointing that was given last night. And afterward, I'll give uh, those of you who were not here last night. I will, I will, I will anoint you. This is the fullness of the spirit of God upon us. You know the the glory of God is to to show the spiritual rhyme the angels and the evil forces that you are God's children you have the power of God's glory in your life those angels that are of God they will do they are commanded to do whatever it takes to assist you those of the evil spirit they are warned not to come near you and that is victory for us this spirit is inside you the the office the calling that we both have is because is it the church the god uh, the lord wants to raise up the fivefold to teach and to guide you but every one of you is going to be as powerful because why it is the same spirit the spirit of the lord shall rest upon you the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord and this is in fact christ in you christ had the fullness of this spirit this is in fact when you receive the anointing of this week, you are receiving the anointing of Jesus Christ himself upon you and all of us will perform greater works John chapter 12 verse 14 the Lord said we will all do greater works I have never imagined I'll be doing this work and I tell you greater works to come it's the same for you every one of you greater works as much as you ask this is why last night we waited and I told the people here you must want it you must want this anointing for yourself and I told them last night about the anointing that Elisha had. His, his spirit was so endowed with the power of God. 
you know, first the spirit comes into his spirit and he receives the anointing, that power. But because his bones, his body is also connected to the spirit. So when he died, his bone retained that anointing, that power. This is why in the account we, we read where one day they threw the dead bodies into his grip and the dead bodies came alive. That is the anointing, that is the power that God has given to us. It is for us. There is no one special. Only thing, you keep yourself holy unto the Lord. That's what the spirit of the fear of the Lord is all about, holiness. Keep yourself holy. And this is why the fast is, is, is of course, the benefit is to lose weight. Nah. <laughs> uh, 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 since my army days, uh, I have always wanted to be 71, 72, back to that. Nah. But for the last 15 years only, uh, okay, Pai say last year when I came back from Cambodia, it was 80 kg. Wow. So I've been walking, I mean, doing very hard. So been maintaining 74, always never go down 74. But this one week, uh, wow, now 72, you know. Wow. So uh, I'm aiming a bit better, lah, maybe 70. Lah. Uh, but see how, lah, uh, call more. For, call for more fast, fast uh, no problem. Uh. <laughs> so, let's, let's want it. Do you want it? Now, let's ignore the, the soul that is talking to you. The soul will say, you have it, what for? You know, what for have it? You, you still have problem at home. You still have problem at work. <clears throat> Uh, you still have a problem with your family, you know. So what for? That is your soul struggling. But you must want it. Want it, take it in. Pray into it. And you will change you. Now, Pastor mentioned about miracles coming. I have seen that in the things to come with our church. Last week, uh, I was given a vision. I've seen that. <laughs> Healing coming in. And, and it, it, it's going to be the cooperative, the, 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 the cooperative anointing. It's going to be so tangible. And it's going to come. So, receive it. Pray into it. And the Lord will release it. <laughs> I was telling them last night, Elisha was so conversant, so, so in tune with his anointing that all the miracles he did, he didn't pray once. He didn't say, Lord, okay, I'm going to do this healing. Let your work be done. You know, and then he, no. He just, okay, let it be done. So I was given that insight about the axe head. You know how the axe head flowed up? When, when the man borrowed the axe from another person and then he was chopping wood and then phew, uh, the axe head broke and then it fell in the river. He said, oh no! See now! I have to return. I, I can't afford to return. Then he went to Elijah and said, oh please help me. And Elijah came and he plucked a stick and he threw the river and the acid floated up. What actually happened was the spirit beings were at work, the spirit powers were at work. When he threw that stick into the river, the stick was floating. But in that instant, both the stick and the acid exchanged molecule. So the molecule of the ex, uh, the stick went into the acid. And the molecule of the acid went to the stick, the stick sank, the acid floated. That is, that is the, the latent power of the anointing that we're going to have. It's the same power when, when, when 
God brought the rod of Aaron back into life that is sprouted and then the next day uh, one almond seed. Uh, this is this is the anointing that I want you to ask for. I want you to receive it. Okay. Well, I I, I prepared a short devotion so I, I will just uh, share a bit from there because I think there is something that I want to uh, touch on. Let's turn to Proverbs 29 verse 18. Oh, this is the first time uh, I never stop to drink water. No? Now here's so near I never drink. So far I keep drinking. That goes to show uh, men's emotion uh, cannot get you want to have. Can have you don't want to have. Uh, so next time whenever I stand up put it here then I don't need to drink. Proverbs 29 verse 18 It says here Where there is no revelation The people cast off restraints But happy is the one Who keeps the law We should rejoice Because right now There is revelation There is prophetic vision You should rejoice Because the Lord has given through me, the prophet, to reveal to you his revelation. Therefore, we are going to be in order. There is, there is going to be the. You see, when where there is no revelation, there is no restraint. Everyone thinks he hears this. That is the rule of the prophet. I receive from the Lord. I dispense it to you. You listen. You believe it you accept it and it works as a constraint to the body of Christ without a revelation everyone will say oh, this is it that is that and everyone will be doing their own thing no control no restraint and Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20 talk about uh, the foundation of the Apostle and a prophet. Here in this verse, there is revelation and law. Prophet and apostle. The Lord has established us for this work. And with this, our role, and with this verse, we are going to do great things for the Lord. Let's, um, let us Keep this vision in our heart. Before, I mean, time shuns up. I, I want us to uh, proclaim together, okay, uh, some of the prophecy that were given so that we do not, and also that as we proclaim it, it, it is received into our spirit. Let's turn to Psalms 47 verse 8 And I want us all to read together, okay? Whichever uh, version you use is, is okay But we, we all read together, we proclaim it Make it a proclamation Okay, it has to be a proclamation Let's read Psalms 47, verse 5 to verse 8. Okay? Okay, ready? One, two, three. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. God reigns over the nation. God sits on His holy throne. God reigns over the nation and God sits on His holy throne. That was the... Amen. That was the, the prophecy. When I saw the glory of God, that was the word that came to my mind. Let's turn to Psalms 11.
Let's read verse 4 together. Okay, ready? One, two, three. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelid tests the Son of Man. Let this be in your spirit. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let's read Micah chapter 4. Verse 6 and 7. Micah chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Ready? Okay, ready? One, two, three. In that day, says the Lord, I will assemble the lame, I will gather the outcasts, and those whom I have afflicted. I will make the lame a remnant, and the outcasts a strong nation. So the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion from now on, even forever. Amen. Now, when I was reading this, COG seemed like an outcast church. But the Lord will make it a strong church. Okay? Let's believe in that. Huh? I think I will want us to read just one more. Okay, Psalms 91. Let's read the whole Psalms 91. Okay, this is, this is our assurance. This is our, our inheritance. Ready? Psalms 91. 16 verses, all read together. One, two, three. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, nor evil shall be for you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen, Lord. Let's, let's pause. Before I close in prayer, uh, let's think of what I've shared. And the Lord says in Ezekiel 36, verse 26, He said, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and you will keep my judgment and do them. Let's pray. Lord, we 
We bless your name, Lord. You are enthroned, Lord. You sit on your throne in the heavens. You have established, Lord, your power and authority over all nations, over the whole earth. You are victorious, Lord. And we, with this vision, Lord, we receive, Lord, your, your victory upon our lives, your glory upon our bodies, even into the marrow of our bodies, into our spirit. Lord, see that we have risen, we have arise, Lord. We shine, Lord, because your light and your glory is upon us. Because from this day on, you will be our everlasting light. Therefore, there shall be no longer any darkness in us. So, Father, we, we want to give time to pray into all this anointing. We want to give time to pray into all these visions, all these prophecies. We receive, Lord, all the visions and prophecies into our life. We receive now, Lord. So, Lord, may your Spirit cause us to come alive. Cause us, Lord, to walk according to your judgment. And may we, Lord, shine on your glory wherever we go. Thank you, Lord. And now, Lord, may your mercy go with us. May your countenance, Lord, always, Lord, reflect your glory upon us as we receive it. And we pray all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So, um, maybe sing one song. Okay. Sing one song. And then, uh, uh, halfway, I'll just call those of you who want prayer, you come. But then, uh, when you finish the song just now, you were singing one of the songs. Uh, just now. What was the song? Uh, mm, Jesus and the oil uh, yesterday. Uh, uh, just now, how marvelous. I'm so okay. Oh, okay. Wow. How marvelous and how wonderful Christ is for us. You see, I'm learning from Elijah and David. Worship before prayer. Right? Uh, it is in the worship that we we remove ourselves and we invite the presence of God. And then the Lord will work among us.
that you are enthroned. Oh Father, we serve a risen Lord, all powerful, all honor and blessing, and all power given to Him. We proclaim it into ourselves, we proclaim it into the spiritual rhyme that Christ is King, Christ reigns over all creation. And God, you are enthroned in heaven. Father, we want to praise your name. We worship you. Now, Lord, pray, Lord. Work in us, Lord. The anointing that we have received, work in us as we work into them. Lord. The visions and anointing. That, Lord, indeed, your church will arise. And your church will glorify you. Your Son, Jesus Christ. We praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, send us, Lord. Let your mercy follow us all the days of our life. As we, Lord, consecrate ourselves daily, Lord, to walk in holiness before you. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Let's give Jesus a praise.